Hello everyone, welcome to HW News. Interesting developments are happening in Maharashtra politics and happening at a very fast pace. Amit Shiv Sena's sudden softening of stand towards BJP and especially Prime Minister Modi, the latest development regarding NCP has caught everyone's attention. The ghost of Maharashtra State Cooperative Bank scam is back to haunt Maharashtra Deputy Chief Minister and NCP leader Ajit Pawar. This time, the Enforcement Directorate has taken action in the case related to the 25,000 crore rupees scam in which Ajit Pawar is named as an accused. Turning up the heat on NCP senior leader, the Enforcement Directorate on Thursday attached properties amounting to around 65 crore 75 lakh rupees in connection with the alleged fraud. The action was taken under the provision of the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. Now, incidentally, the assets attached include land, building, plant and machinery of a sugar mill situated at Satara, which have now been seized by the ED. The ED action spells another trouble for the NCP, which is among the parties in Maharashtra's ruling alliance, Mahavika Saghadi. While the case itself has simmered for a long, long time, with at least two other agencies probing the same, the timing of the ED action has certainly raised the eyebrows. The opposition has already accused the BJP central government of inducing harassment by central agencies. So, is the latest action of Enforcement Directorate another tactic of putting pressure on the MVA alliance partner? What is the implication of this? We will talk about it in this video. But before that, if you are watching this video on YouTube, please make sure you subscribe to our channel, you like this video and you comment below it. And if you're watching this video on Facebook, please do like our page and share this video to as many people as possible. Well, before moving further, let us first understand what exactly the MSCB scam is. Maharashtra State Cooperative Bank is the apex bank of all the cooperative banks in Maharashtra. The bank was in loss for many years. The loss was to the tune of billions and it was unable to recover it. However, it all came out after the NABAR report. Nabad had claimed that the bank had come under scrutiny due to huge irregularities in debt collection and many other irregularities in the lending process. The Reserve Bank of India went a step further and pointed fingers directly towards the board of directors and this created a massive uproar in the state politics then. The board of directors of the state cooperative bank consisted of top and powerful politicians from Maharashtra. Most of them were from the ruling NCP and the Congress at that point of time. Manik Rao Patil was the chairman of the bank, while Ajit Pawar, Vijay Singh Mohite Patil, Anand Rao Varsul, Shivaji Rao Nalavde, Hassan Mushrif were among the directors of the bank. Now, the cooperative banks are the cornerstone of Maharashtra politics. In heydays of the cooperative movement, especially the Nationalist Congress Party and Congress had very strong control over several cooperative institutions. NABARD conducted a high-level probe into the loans given by the bank between 2005 and 2011 and it charged that the bank with fiscal and administrative irregularities including misuse of power and dodgy accounts. NABARD report said that in this period, loans were given to the close aides of these politicians who were also on the board of directors of the bank many of whom did not even fulfill the criteria. There were massive irregularities in loan recovery and thus the bank was incurring losses. The bank's net loss in 2010 was 775 crore rupees, with bad loans totaling to 500 crore rupees. In 2011, the then Chief Minister of Maharashtra, Prithviraj Chavan, had dismissed the State Cooperative Bank's Board of Directors and appointed administrators. There was an inquiry committee set up to investigate the matter, but for years the case was dragged and nothing fruitful was coming out of it until 2019 when the Bombay High Court directed police to register an FIR against NCP Chief Sharad Pawar, Deputy Chief Minister of Maharashtra, current Deputy Chief Minister of Maharashtra Ajit Pawar, NCP leader Jayan Patil and over 70 others in the MSCB scam case. Now this happened just before the Maharashtra Assembly election. ED also took action in this case. Now, it's a different matter that the issue was milked by NCP to its advantage in the campaign. Now, let us understand why did Enforcement Directorate seize the Jarandeshwar sugar mill. In the latest action against Ajit Pawar, the ED attached his assets, including his land, building, plant and machinery of the Jarandeshwar sugar mill in Satara. 
How does this connect to Ajit Pawar? Let us understand through graphical representation. Amid rising debts of the sugar mill, the MSCB auctioned Jarandeshwar Sahakari Sugar Mill in 2010. The ED says that it was sold at an undervalued price. Ajit Pawar was one of the members of the board of directors of MSCB at that point of time. The sugar mill was purchased by a company called Guru Commodity Services Private Limited and again it leased it to Jarandeshwar Sugar Mills Private Limited. Now let's understand about this company called Guru Commodity Services. This company was floated by a Mumbai-based developer called Umkar Group along with another Mumbai-based developer called Shivalik Ventures. Umkar Group promoter Bahulal Verma is now in jail in a money laundering case related to Yes Bank. Now let's talk about Ajit Pawar and Sugar Mill. Now how did Guru Commodity Services manage to fund the purchase? Apparently, a part of the funds came from Sparkling Soil Private Limited. This company is related to Ajit Pawar and his wife. So ED says both Jarandeshwar Sugar Mills Private Limited and Guru Commodity Services Private Limited are proxy owners of the sugar mill while actual control is with Sparkling Soil Private Limited which is related to Ajit Pawar and his wife. Within a month of leasing out the mill, the Pune District Central Cooperative Bank had sanctioned 100 crore rupees loan to the sugar mill. And interestingly, Ajit Pawar was one of the directors of the bank. Subsequently, over the next few years, an additional 600 crore rupees loan was granted to Jarandeshwar Sugar Mill by Pune, DCCB and others. Well, this case has conflict of interest written all over it. And ED had also flagged this before the special PMLA court last year. Ajit Pawar was accused of usurping the sugar mill by Shalini Tai Patil also. It is not only the ED which has accused Ajit Pawar of wrongdoing. For years, founder and former director of the mill, Shalini Tai Patil has been fighting a bitter legal battle over the control of the mill. In 2003, Shalini Tai Patil had taken the lead to start the mill as a cooperative unit. Cane growers from Karad and Koregao had become members of the mill, which aimed to ensure the development of the drought-prone area. After three years of operations, in 2006, the problem started with the mill. The mill faced a blow due to drought and non-availability of cane, and its bad debts started rising. By 2006 and 7, the mill had stopped operations already. Subsequently, it was put up for auction in 2010 by MSCB. However, Shalini Tai, talking to a Marathi news channel, said that factory was little late to pay the loan installment. With only 3 crore rupees remaining to pay for loan settlement, the factory was put up for sale by MSCB. 8 crore 34 lakh rupees were deposited in the account of the factory at that point of time. And the request to return the money was also ignored. However, since Ajit Pawar was on the bank's board, he was the seller and he was the buyer, and so they couldn't do anything. That is what Shalini Tai Patil has said. Now, after all this, what has Ajit Pawar said? Breaking the silence in the matter, Ajit Pawar today denied any links with Guru Commodities. He said that the allegations against him are politically motivated. The Jarandeshwar case has already been investigated by various agencies, but nothing has come out of it. But there is also one more important question, and that question is the timing of the ED action. The Mahavika Saghadi of Shiv Sena, NCP and Congress is now more than a year and a half old. In this time span, it was claimed by the opposition BJP multiple times that the alliance is not stable and its government in the state could collapse any time. So far, the alliance has rejected the claims and has said that the government will complete full five years term. However, recent developments and circumstances have once again put a question mark on the stability of the Mahavika Saghadi. The action against Ajit Pawar comes at a time when Shiv Sena seems to have changed its tune towards the BJP. After Uddhav Thakre's meeting with Prime Minister Modi last month, speculations are rife that former allies may be coming closer. Recently, party spokesperson Sanjay Raut also said that both PM Modi and Maharashtra Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre share a strong bond between each other. At least one MLA of the party, that is Shiv Sena, Pratap Sarnaik had requested Uddhav Thakre to consider reuniting with the BJP to stop the harassment of the party leaders by central agencies. On the other hand, the Congress party has been singing the tune of fighting upcoming elections alone and on its own strength. Thus, the timing of the ED action has raised a lot of questions. 
whether it is to weaken already shaking MVA. What do you think about this? Do let us know in the comment box below. For more news and updates, you can log on to www.hwnews.in. Now, before I end this video, for the last few months, we have been asking you to support us through our YouTube membership program. And it is heartening to see so many people coming out and showing support. It motivates us to continue the journalism that speaks truth to power. But many of you also wrote to us saying that they were unable to support us through YouTube. A lot of you also wrote to us asking whether there is an option of one-time payment. So we have come up with another option on our website through which you can support us. You can choose if you want to support us through monthly one-time payment or yearly one-time payment on the website. This subscription plan also comes with certain benefits. So do check it out. Go to our website, click on the support on the topmost toolbar and check out the plan that you want to take up. Your support means the most to us. So do subscribe. Until then, stay tuned to HW News. Now be the first to know about the latest updates on our new news app. Go on your Android or iOS, search for HW News Network. Download our app, choose the language you prefer to get updates in and be up to date with the latest news.